8 signs that you're gonna have enough for retirement. This video was actually inspired by this article which I came across. It mentions that 1 in 2 Singaporeans will run out of monies in the last 14 years of life. I actually found that an interesting finding and I'll give you signs that you are not part of that group. So if this topic interests you, continue watching on. Hi guys, welcome back. 8 signs that you're gonna have enough for retirement and before I get there, if I need to smash the like button early because it's taken our team hours to prepare this for you and you know I have the goods. Number 1 of today's list is actually you have been paying your bills on time. This is the biggest sign, you don't have a debt problem. In fact, in all likelihood, you are someone who doesn't have a spending problem. You're not someone who has a bonus incoming and go buy a new car. You're not someone who has a shopping problem whereby you need to spend to feel shook. On the converse, you are someone who knows your budgets and you are organized. That's a fantastic sign. In any case, if you are late on your bills, maybe this is the first thing you need to change so that you are on track for your own retirement. Number two, you die mostly at home or in hawker centers or in coffee shops. We can even throw in simple restaurants because simple restaurants include fast food restaurants like McDonald's, correct? Even a meal at Swenson's or Jack's Place wouldn't cost that much, so we can include them. And the main thing is these restaurants typically don't serve expensive alcohol. You know someone who goes to a good buffet regularly like those that cost more than $100 per person. You know someone who actually goes to eat fine dining like Japanese omikaze, something that costs more than $300 per person. If you are willing to eat simple, this is the first sign that you are able to keep your expenses low. You have not allowed your lifestyle to inflate together with your income. And as something I've shared on this channel before, if you can avoid lifestyle creep, you have already won half the battle. Number 3 on today's list is you actually shop groceries in NTUC fair price. You can even throw in Seng Song and Giant because traditionally these are the lower cost supermarkets. The converse are actually specialized supermarkets. Those that sell specially imported material like Japanese grapes that cost $80 or Italian cheese that cost $15 a block or a piece of steak that costs $23. Now, Dollars and Cents is actually this article that mentioned that household brands do indeed save you money. And right now, they have a whole range of variety. So you actually get everything you need with household brands. The question is whether you are okay with it or not. And for myself, with a family of four, we spend about $900 in grocery shopping on average. But within private clients, I've actually seen some who spend more than $2,000. So the scale is very wide. And the first sign of keeping your expenses low is actually in your grocery shopping habits. And a good indication of knowing how much you spend in retirement is what you actually spend right now. So if you're not used to the expensively labelled cheese and expensively labelled alcohol, then perhaps you're going to not spend that much also in retirement, which will help you have enough. Number four, you have already paid off your mortgage or you're actually close to doing so. Mortgage loan is definitely one of the biggest expenses out there for families. And if you are holding a $1 million loan, you realize that your monthly cost is at least $3,000. That's even in this low interest rate environment. Of course, I'm not telling you to rush to pay it off because it's really cheap to keep borrowing as of right now. The key is your ability to pay it off. The mortgage loan actually starts by your choice of where you stay, correct? If you buy a residence that's $2 million, naturally it's going to take some effort to pay it off. But if you choose to buy a house that's only 500000 you realize that it's pretty easy to pay off, especially if there's joint income. The key to understand is house is a liability. It does not bring you income. It costs you money. But some people will argue that they can live in a big house and if you just sell to downgrade. That is actually possible, but the only question I have is pride. When you're used to living in a good environment and to move to somewhere that's simpler, it is a bit of a humbling pie. So consider about it. Number five is you have full retirement sum already in your CPF. Now before I explain this point, I invite you to smash or subscribe because I'll be covering more on CPF and retirement topics. And if it's something that's of your interest, make sure you subscribe to get notified. The benchmark is actually full retirement sum, FRS. And as of 2021, it's $186,000. Next year in 2022, it's only $192,000. If you're thinking you're some way off that amount, and maybe not that many people have full retirement sum, let me show you this summary table over here to really dispel that myth. What can you see, which is why I've boxed up in blue? You realize that many people, in fact, I've counted it out, more than 500,000 people at the age of 35 to 55 have more than 300,000 
already in CPF. That goes to show, with a good solid career as well as possibly regular voluntary contribution, you can actually meet that amount and in future, it will reward you strongly. For full dump sum, it's projected to give about $1,400 per month in terms of monthly income from 65 onwards. And many studies have shown that that is at least enough to cover your basic needs. And as always, CPF life pays a lifetime, which means you're not gonna run out of money. Number six, you do not gamble. Gambling is one of the biggest vices. And for someone who has inherited $1 million but spending time in the casino, there is always that lingering worry that that amount would get eventually drained by gambling. Now, I've actually done a previous research on lottery winning. I don't know if you've seen that video before or not. I'll leave links below. It shows that 70% of lottery winners actually spend away all their winnings within the five year time frame. And a further thing to note, gambling holds a major appeal to many retirees. Why? Simply because there's so much ample time. You know, back in working career, 8 a.m. you have to get into office, or 8 p.m. you're so tired from a whole long day in work. But in a retiree's lifestyle, there isn't that much else to look after and spend energy yet. That's why there's ample opportunity to gamble. And to exacerbate matters, a retiree will often find it hard to seek advice on any gambling addiction. If you look around the retirees that you know, you realize that their social circle has shrank, correct? They've lost some friends, their families have become a bit more distant, and some retirees face a bit more isolation than before. That could be a reason why gambling is a difficult problem to address in retirees. Number seven, you do not have a dependent. I have young kids. But for some families, it's even harder. They have a parent who is disabled or has dementia. They have a spouse who has cancer. They have a sibling who is disabled. So if you come from a fortunate background, be very thankful, be very grateful because life has actually given you an easier path to retirement. Number eight, you have more than 500,000 invested into properties, equities, or funds. Now, 500,000 may not seem a lot because if you get only 3% real return, that means only 15,000 in terms of passive income, correct? But this links to all the other points above. If your house is fully paid, if you have enough in CPF, does that mean this passive income is above and beyond? And again, it depends on how much you're spending in retirement. So if you're working towards retirement, aim for this 500,000 mark first. It's the first milestone to hit. Every day, you start to realize that your passive income for investments will start to get sizable. And since you stayed to here, I've actually a bonus tip for you. Regardless of how much you have in your retirement pot, it could be 100,000, a million, or 10 million, you always have that lingering fear of whether you have enough. Simply because we're also used to having active income in our working years. And once that is gone and you're retired, the fear that you run out of money is very real. It affects everybody. And it's actually how you get used to it. And one of the most effective ways that I'd like to share with you is to always be learning. Because if you're always learning, you always have the opportunity to always keep earning. Never get too out of touch with society. Never get too out of touch with technology. So hopefully that's a wisdom that we all hold. And with that, we can retire happily. So hopefully this presentation helped you in some way. Again, invite you to smash on like and leave your comments in the sections below. I've actually used previous video on retirement that might be of interest to you. $1.2 million, is it sufficient? If you're curious, check out this video after this and I'll see you there too. Take care and goodbye.